Hey everybody, it's a nice sunny afternoon and I'm here at your uh, local coffee shop to ruin your beautiful day by talking about death. Now, death is an important subject and I think at times we all have to All right, because this is a grammar short, it's not actually about death, but it concerns a sentence that I ran across in a story. Uh, it's actually a news story about the last person to have died in the stands at the Indianapolis 500. It's a kind of a grim subject. Uh, I mean, there was an accident on the, you know, with the cars, and a tire flew off, um, and it ended up killing a person. Uh, so it's a it's a very sad situation. But in that story, I came across an amazing sentence, a sentence that just sort of made me, made my jaw drop. I, I was like, this is, this is an amazing sentence and I have to share it with the rest of the world. Now you might be thinking, uh, <laughs> one sentence? Wait, what is so important about one sentence that you have to interrupt my beautiful sunny day? Well, it's because I think this one sentence really exemplifies something that good, no, that great writers know, which is that occasionally you need to turn your writing up to 11. You need to juice it a little bit. You can't do it all the time. If uh, all of your writing is at 11, then the part that's most important is not going to be distinguishable from the rest of it. But if you know that you have an important point to make, you can throw in a very artfully constructed sentence and you can draw people's attention to that. Now, to really illustrate this, I'm going to start by showing you the sentence as it does not appear in the article. He left the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in a helicopter, but he left the city in a body bag. Now, there's nothing technically wrong with that sentence. It's a reasonable compound sentence, but it is really about a very important moment in the story, and it is drawing attention to the fact that this injury occurred at the Motor Speedway, and by the time this person went home, he's actually from the state of Wisconsin, by the time this person went home, he was, of course, in a body bag. Now, what the writer did to this sentence to make it something amazing is that he used what's called the elliptical construction. Now, you're probably familiar with ellipsis dots, the three dots that, you know, that indicate that there's uh, something missing, something left out. You use them when you are quoting, you use them when you want to leave something unsaid in a text message or something like that. Um, you can use the elliptical construction in a sentence. It doesn't involve three dots, but it does involve leaving out a part of the sentence. It's most commonly used when you are leaving out the verb in the second half of a compound sentence, if that verb is the same as it would be in the first half of the compound sentence. Um, and so let's take a look at what the sentence actually is in the story. He left the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in a helicopter, the city in a body bag. Now, if we put these two sentences side by side, we see that in the second half of this compound sentence, the writer has left out both the verb, left, and the subject, he, because they would be the same in both parts of the sentence. Leaving them out, it actually does an amazing thing in your brain when you are the reader. You have to fill in that information for yourself. You look at what would be a fragment of the second half of this compound sentence, and you say, well, okay, obviously the writer didn't intend this to be a fragment. What goes in the missing space? And when you realize it's the same subject, the same verb as was in the first half of the compound sentence, that, you know, there's a little light bulb that goes on in your head. There's, there's endorphins that get released. You actually react much more strongly to this sentence because of the elliptical construction, because the writer deliberately left something out. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, if you are uh, thinking of it as a reader, thinking that you are going to have to analyze text in the future, you can be on the lookout for sentences like this because when this happens, the writers have made a deliberate choice to use this construction. Something important must be going on in that sentence. 
And then on the flip side, for you as a writer, when you get to something important in your text and you want to draw some attention to it, you want to give the readers that extra little rush of endorphins and draw attention to what you are saying at this point, at this exact moment, the elliptical construction is a good way to do it. So I'm hoping you never have to write a story about somebody who died at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But at some point along the way, I hope you find a sentence that's important enough that you can try the elliptical construction. I'll see you for the next one.